Hi guys, Brand here, and welcome to another commentary video. Today we're going to be talking about a thing that we can all agree on in Dead by Daylight, regardless of what side you play, uh, that kind of uh, heavily offsets the fun in Dead by Daylight, and often ruins the fun for a lot of people in Dead by Daylight, and that being the map design. And map design in DBD has always been uh, hit or miss, mostly miss, <laughs> but I feel like there's a reason for this. I feel like there's a, uh, what I would like to call the map design paradox that uh, behavior runs into when they're trying to make maps that makes things almost impossible to get right, and until we start adjusting other aspects of the game map de map design will always be bad and maps will always suck so let's go ahead and talk about it so what is this map design paradox that i'm talking about essentially behavior can kind of do no right when it comes to map design because essentially maps that are sided towards one side or the other will be really really good for some killers or really really bad for others no matter how well they design the map to be killer sided or survivor side or wherever it happens to be essentially there's no way they can design it in a way that one size fits all that it makes everybody happy just because of the, the, the disparity between power strengths in the game. Perfect example of this, if you're looking at a map like Garden of Joy, which is, you know, infinitely one of Behavior's uh, most survivor side maps that they have put out. Uh, they've tried to adjust it <laughs> before, but it still retains its incredible strength. Um, for a character like Nurse, for example, Garden of Joy doesn't really matter <laughs> because she can just go through walls whenever she wants. So something like that big god window in main building doesn't matter as much. Uh, if you're looking at like the parking lot loop from shack all the way to the parking lot where the back of the map is one complete loop uh if you're playing somebody like billy who can just easily you know zone somebody off and insta down them before they can reach all those extra tiles then yes that's way better to handle but if you're somebody like ghostface shack alone is a problem <laughs> shack alone by itself is an issue much less shack into a path tile into a jungle gym into another jungle gym into the parking lot loop right right like how is ghostface realistically supposed to handle that situation even if ghostface the, the ghostface in question brought a lot of chase perks like bam or coup or brutal or enduring like that doesn't help that situation all that much that ghost face is still heavily screwed in that situation just because he got sent to a specific map whereas other characters like nurse just easy breezy just go just beautiful cover girl go through it like they just don't have to deal with that um so the the flip side of this getting to the paradox part uh the flip side of this is what if we just make maps like really really good for a character like ghost face like no bit really strong big loops weaker main buildings and then we're gonna make uh mostly path tiles not a lot of big uh, crazy jungle gyms and even if they do spawn jungle gyms it's gonna be the weaker stuff like long wall short walls lt walls well then you have a lot of the middle of the pack killers that suddenly get really really oppressive perfect example like huntress xenomorph a lot of path tiles only have like waist high loops <laughs> around them so uh, obviously huntress deathslinger xenomorph obviously hits you over those things um even like just very very strong firm b tier killers like wraith like skull merchant suddenly just get really really strong because of all there is a path tile in the way wraith has immense map mobility skull merchant obviously has all the bs stuff that she has so if survivors have less things to defend themselves with suddenly it becomes becomes extremely killer sided even for like the like b or c tier killers <laughs> like imagine clown on a map with not a lot of pallets and none of the pallets are really really strong suddenly he just starts blowing through them and then the survivors have nothing to deal with they have nothing to deal with the killer with and the reason i bring it up is because that's obviously the the the, the immediate answer right is of like if garden of joy is too strong we just need to make maps that are the opposite of it with weak main buildings not a lot of strong tiles not a lot of jungle gyms but that it then makes most of the the roster almost too strong it makes it to where survivors can't do as much so it's just kind of like it's darned if you do and darned if you don't so if we keep making super strong maps with gone windows and stuff like that characters like pyramid ed Billy probably will be fine. <laughs> like top five, top 10 killers in the game will probably still play the game largely the same and still largely be fine because they have strong enough powers that they can handle the large maps even if it is a bad time. Uh, however, if we start making really, really weak maps um, that may make it easier for a lot of the weaker characters in the game to succeed, but now those five top 10 characters are gonna succeed even quicker and make a lot of characters that were previously not frustrating because at least they had to respect tiles and loops. Now that the tiles and loops are weak, now they're going to be very, very annoying. So the TLDR here is that there's too much power disparity between killer characters in order to make a sensible map because they can't literally cannot account for balancing versus ghost phase versus balancing towards like a pyramid head because pyramid head can just shoot through walls. So they have to make tiles in which a way that even with a character that can actively shoot their projectile through walls, there's got to be something they can do. 
But also, you can't make the tile so strong that Ghostface, who has no anti loop power besides just insta doubting you sometimes, uh, that they can also handle that loop. Like, it's impossible to balance for both of these situations evenly. And that's why we get so many just all over the place maps that don't seem to make a lot of sense because it really is an impossible task to design for both those killers at the same time. And that's just a, a, one example of many. <laughs> so honestly, the way we fix maps is not actually to look at map design and how to switch it up because technically we need to do something first in that scenario, which is to make most of the characters in the game, most of the killer characters in the game, mostly even. I've talked about this before in many different videos, but the, the disparity between killers and Dead by Daylight is kind of vast. Like the difference between a Blight and a Myers is just <laughs> like night and day, like night and day. Like these characters cannot perform the same consistently. Blight's gonna coast a lot more than a Myers ever could. And that's just, the, that's the nature of the beast. That's what we're working with here. Um, but as a result of that incredible power disparity, we can't design maps around both of them. So realistically, we need to bring characters that are in like top three, top five, back down into the A tier, and we need to bring the characters that have been sucking for a long time, Trapper, Myers, Freddy, Ghostface, etc., and bring them up into like C, B tier. That way, everybody is relatively around the same power level with some give and take. That way, we can design maps more uniformly. That way, it's good for everyone, both survivor and killer, because currently the question of design it for survivor and killer, it, like survivors are all the same character. <laughs> they are all skins of the same character that has the same abilities, so it's easy to design for survivor. But it's hard to design for killer because every single killer is a different character with vastly different power levels which vastly differently affect their experience in the game so the only way we're going to be able to solve the map design paradox is to actually finally you know thankfully what they are starting to do slowly is start kind of bringing the lower tier killers up bring some of the higher tier characters down and kind of put them in a place where they're a little bit more uniform in terms of their strength that way we can design for the killer role in general now that it's not so vast <laughs> between uh like like i said like myers and nurse or freddy and blight um that way we can make map design a little bit more uh uniform and actually design it in a way that's fun for both sides and balance for both sides because with just with how the power disparity is, that's not possible right now. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video, friends. A little bit of a ranty one today. Do you think we need to balance killers before we tackle map design? Or is there something do you think would actually fix it without having to tackle that first? Let me know down in the comments below, but that's gonna be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Other than that, I will see you in tomorrow's video. But if I do not, I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.